Hey guys, JackT175, and today I'm going to be doing a video, and I'm going to be showing you guys my setup, but I don't know much about what anything really does, with well, suspension-wise, so I'm not really going to be talking about that too much, just, I'll tell you what I know, and another thing, I'm almost at 500 subscribers, I'm, I think I'm at like, 590 right now and uh, I'll probably hit 500 well I'm like pretty much guaranteed to hit 500 before the end of the week like before the end of next week I mean so like by June 15th I think it's almost guaranteed I have 900 or geez I can't talk it's almost guaranteed I have 500 at the rate that I'm going and uh yeah, so I have a little bit of a video made up already, but let me know if you want me to do something else too, because what I'm doing is kind of average and a lot of people do it. There's nothing special, so let me know. All right, so first off, stability. I run mine at zero. Most people are against it, but uh, I don't know. I just like it. I'm used to it, and you can throw some fat whips with it. Auto clutch RPMs and braking torque at 500. Max dab speed at 30. And what that does is, uh, you can see it says miles per hour right there. Right after it says max dab speed. And that's how fast you can go and have your guy stick his leg out in corners at the same time. So if you have it all the way up at 60, it'll stick his leg out when you're going 60 miles an hour. All right, arcade physics just no please please don't run arcade physics i don't care if you just got the game just don't don't play arcade physics please uh both brakes on anti-lock stop wheelies i have on front only automatic shifting no i highly recommend not having automatic shifting because uh you can get a lot more power uh my one friend he had automatic shifting and I kind of forced him to switch to standard shifting and once he got used to it he actually got a lot faster so it helps dab one stopped yes that's when uh, when you're not moving if you have it on then uh, he'll just put his legs down and you won't tip over but if you have it off you're gonna have to manually dab and sit down so that doesn't happen sticky sit dab that is uh i have mine at no and that means i have to hold my sit button and my dab button for it to work but if you have it on sticky you just click it and it'll stay like that then click it again and it'll it'll stand up realign after fall i have that set to no but some people like it what it does is it points you towards the next timing gate if you go down but I think the worst part about it is sometimes timing gates aren't done very well and sometimes there aren't any timing gates at all and they're all like at the edge of the map you know align you really weird I just don't like it and when you're getting realigned your guy doesn't get up like he just slides on the side of the bike whereas when it's off you can kind of spin yourself around slowly while he's getting back up so it's a little bit quicker too Reverse, eh, reverse steering, put that on yes. Because uh, if you have it on no, then your steering will actually be reversed. It's really weird. I don't know why it's like that. Lean indicator, uh, what that is. Uh, I'll just show you what it is right now, actually, really quick. Basically, what it is, is when you turn, you uh, it's going to show a little ring around the edge of the screen so here you can kind of see on the uh let me just get turned around a little more you can see on the left side a little bit how there's that gray thing and when you really lean over a lot it turns red like that so uh i don't like it anymore especially when you start throwing whips and doing backflips and stuff like it gets really weird like you can see right there when i got upside down it just kind of messes you up a little bit I don't know I just I don't like it it's weird man I'm 
not doing good today. All right, so let me just turn that off again. So that's pretty much it for this. Now I'm gonna get into suspension and gearing. All right, so here we are in suspension and gearing. And uh, if you wanna copy my setup, just a disclaimer before you do it, I have two setups. I have my national or my outdoor, and then I have my supercross slash arena cross. So I'm kind of just, I'm just gonna say everything, and then you can kind of minimize this and uh, go into game and copy it all down. So fork high speed compression damping. This is all for forks. So high speed compression damping 81, low speed compression damping 61. High speed rebound damping 70, low speed rebound damping 41, spring rate 25, preload 35, and oil level at 80. And now we're at the shocks. So you have high speed compression damping at 79, low speed compression damping 65, high speed rebound damping at 82, low speed rebound damping at 50, spring rate at 16, and shock preload at 38. And now the gearing, uh, I changed my gearing for nationals and out, or I almost said nationals and outdoors, nationals and supercross, but for nationals I run 1-0. Then rider vertical spring 88, Rider vertical damping 40, rider forward spring 88, and rider forward damping 40. And then for my rider mass distribution, I have that at 0.38. And now I'm just gonna switch over to my supercross real quick. All right, so now we're gonna be checking out my supercross setup. And uh, it's, a little bit different the only major differences are gearing and some of the rider movement stuff so uh yeah let's just get into it so i'm just gonna go through everything once again so if you already have it copied in uh you just make these minor changes as you hear them if you want a super cross setup keep that in mind uh so this is for the forks, high speed compression damping 81, low speed compression damping 61, high speed rebound damping 70, low speed rebound damping 41, spring rate 75, preload 50, and oil level 58. Now under the shocks, you have your high speed compression damping 79, low speed compression damping 65, High speed rebound damping 82, low speed rebound damping 50, spring rate 75, and preload at 64. And now onto the gearing. This I have set up for a little more acceleration uh, rather than longer gears, so the gears are a bit shorter. Uh, so you have your counter shaft sprocket at negative one and rear sprocket at zero. And now this is where it gets different uh, with regards to rider movement. So with this, uh, your rider is going to be able to move more than he could with an outdoor setup. So rider vertical spring 100, vertical damping 30, then forward spring 100 and forward damping 30. And I also have my rider mass distribution at 50 so I can get full extension on the bike so I can lean as far as far forward and as far back as I would like so uh, that's pretty much it I don't have anything else to talk about really uh, yeah I'm trying to think that's nothing to have on my mind that I feel like I need to mention so yeah just 
Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.